Hello everyone, Muckluck Douglas Bartholomew Reginald Esquire the fourth here with a guide on ranger pets, their locations, how to obtain them, how to get the ones from Guild Wars 1 or Guild Wars 2, and when to use each type. Now, first off, for those that don't know, if you make a ranger character, anytime you interact with a juvenile animal in the wild, it will have a green name above it so you cannot accidentally kill it, such as this juvenile Psymoth here, you will be able to interact with it just by walking up to it and pressing the F key, and if you have never done that before, it will add that to the list of ranger pets you have unlocked. If you're ever looking for specific pets, or if you just want to expand your collection, this website has a list of all the pet locations in the game. I will have a link to it in the description. There are many pets that can be obtained even at level 1 that are in major cities. For example, this juvenile Siamoth is actually in Radisson, right next to where a brand new Asura character would start out, and other races characters could use the portal from Lion's Arch to come here and get this pet at level 1. Every race's capital city has a few pets to choose from. One great trick is if you are in such a city, simply go to the webpage, use the Control F key to do a search on the webpage, and if I search for Rata. There is a red jellyfish in Ratasum. There's a pink moa in Ratasum, and a Siamoth in Ratasum, which we had already found. That's three additional pet options besides the one you start with that a ranger can access very early on if they chose to do so. Additionally, there are some pets that can only be obtained from Guild Wars 1. The Juvenile Black Moa, the White Raven, the Black Widow Spider, and the Rainbow Jellyfish are all brought over from Guild Wars 1. Now, if you didn't play Guild Wars 1, don't worry, these are not stronger than their counterparts in the game. For example, the Black Moa has a daze that is almost identical to the Pink Moa. So someone else who played Guild Wars 1 and on has unlocked these pets is not going to win in a fight just because they had those pets. Additionally, if you are in the PvP lobby, you will have all pets unlocked. For example, I don't have the Black Widow Spider unlocked, but if I go into PvP, I do have the ability to use it in player versus player. To see if you've got anything from Guild Wars 1 unlocked, simply go to the Hall of Monuments website, I'll link that in the description as well, type in the name of your Guild Wars 1 character, Here's one of mine, and it will check your account to see what you've unlocked. As you can see here, there are many small things, uh, miniatures, weapon and armor skins, etc., that I've unlocked, and I had just barely done enough Guild Wars 1 achievements to unlock the Black Moa. And there are, you know, there's the Rainbow Jellyfish, there's the White Raven, and at the very end is the Black Widow Spider. Again, though, they are mostly a cosmetic choice from their Guild Wars 2 counterparts. So now you know the basics of how to tame a ranger pet, how to find all their locations in the world using the website, and how to bring over the ones from Guild Wars 1. Let's talk about their pet skills. Every pet will be a member of a family. For example, the bear family consists of the brown bear, the morello, the black bear, polar bear, and the arctotus. Now, every member of the bear family will have the same slash, bite, and defy pain ability, but the first skill will change depending on the animal. So, the brown bear has shake it off. If I change to the black bear, it has Enfeebling Roar, and that is its F2 ability, where you press the key and it does it on command. Additionally, all animals of the same family, when you are Soul Beast merged with them, will have the same F1 and F2, but the F3, notice Unflinching Fortitude is there, go back to the Brown Bear, it's Spiritual Reprieve. So the F3 of the merged animal and the F2 of the unmerged will change depending on the specific animal, but the rest of the abilities are the same when you're talking about the same animal type, like cats, dogs, drakes, or bears. Now, when would you use each type of pet? Now, as most know, a soul beast will be merged with their pet much of the time, a druid will have theirs next to them, a core ranger will have theirs next to them, and a leveling ranger that is not yet 80 and can't possibly choose to become a soul beast will have theirs next to them. Let's start with a level 1 option. A level 1 Asuran ranger can choose a moa, a cat, or a drake. My recommendation is the Drake, and there's a couple of reasons for this. The Drake is pretty tough. It's not going to die on you during the leveling process. Uh, it is an all-rounder. You could kind of think of it as a brawler among the pets. Uh, it's not excellent at anything, but it is good at toughness, good vitality, good damage, etc. Additionally, it is one of the only pets in the game where its auto-attack 
is very good at cleaving. You notice it says number of targets three here. It's quite good at hitting everything in front of it. For example, a bird can hit multiple targets if they're stacked up in a perfect pile right in front of it, but it will be very rare that that happens. Additionally, if your pet has more toughness than you, NPCs will favor attacking the pet over you. So if you've got a pet with more toughness, you've got a magnet for the enemy to attack and that is also going to be tough to die. Very handy for leveling. Another excellent option for the leveling process is bears. Bears are one-trick ponies. You'll notice here I am currently on my level 80 ranger. I am in my druid minstrel gear, which has a lot of vitality on it, and I have 22,000 health. This bear is 43,000 hit points. Look at that, almost 4,000 vitality and almost 1,800 toughness. Insane. Additionally, it has a self-healing move and a move that makes it indestructible for a few seconds. It, it, it doesn't die. It effectively does very little damage. Its whole thing is I don't die. That, that, that's it. That's it. That's what it does. So bears and drakes, excellent options during the leveling process. Now, if you are already max level, you will probably almost never use a bear or a drake. Let's go through the categories. Now, looking past the leveling process, let's look at what a max level character would do. I'm going to skim over these and go over some common applications for each of these animals. And I'm going to be a bit blunt here. Now, as always, you can use whichever ones you wish, but I'm just going to be talking about generalizations. Nearly all the MOAs are never used, with the exception of the red. The red MOA, when merged with a power soul beast at maximum level, is often their top DPS pet. When they merge with the red MOA, they gain actual access to Frenzied Attack, which is an excellent damaging move, Worldly Impact, which scales with power, and it gives them power and ferocity during the merge. Alternatively, if the Power Soul Beast is fighting a boss where they need to have more interrupts, they will often substitute the Red Moa for the Rock Gazelle. The Rock Gazelle does require the expansions to obtain. It has almost the same amount of damage as the Red Moa. It also gives power and ferocity. Its abilities do a little less damage, still has worldly impact. However, the charge F2 is a daze, and they can also unmerge and hit F2, and the pet will do head toss, which is a launch. So they have access to more crowd control on demand at a slight sacrifice in damage. Going to the cats, the jungle stalker is almost never used. The lynx is an excellent choice in either PvP or in PvE. If you're merging with your pet, you are a condition soul beast. Merging with the lynx gives you 150 additional condition damage. It gives you an F2, which scales with condition damage, which it does quite a bit. And you also have Primal Cry, which is an AoE condition damage. For many, but not all fights, for a condition damage soul beast, the Lynx is the top choice. The Snow Leopard and the Jaguar are almost never used. The Tiger is useful in PvP for a simple reason. The Tiger's Pounce does very high damage when it smashes into the enemy with an only 10 second cooldown. This is used quite often with the marksmanship trait line, which has things like you and your pet do an opening strike when you enter combat, opening strike inflicts cripple, you make your pet's next attack do a huge increase to damage, opening strike for you and your pet has a 100% chance to crit, gain opening strike again whenever you gain fury, and it does even more damage, and when you use Great Sword 2, you increase the pet's next attack again. So with all of that combined, when you're about to enter combat, you swing the Great Sword 2 at an enemy and or interrupt them, swap to your tiger, tell it to attack, and that's when you see the tiger smash into the enemy for five to 10,000 damage. The cat family is notoriously fragile, but it doesn't matter if your opponent is already dead. The cheetah I have seen used in certain PvP builds, few and far between, but it is a fun one. Its F2 has a much longer cooldown than the tiger's with a 30 second cooldown, but it teleports to the enemy. It has the same rules as a thief's shadow step, and so if there is any path to the enemy, even if it's a long one, it can teleport to it and start attacking. The teleport itself does much less damage than the tiger's attack, but it still follows it up with the same cat abilities. Sand Lion, I have never seen used in any serious play. Same for the entire Devourer family. Same for the Crichton Drakehound. Now the Wolf family, when merged as a Soul Beast, you can use the F1 as a sort of a budget version of the bird mobility option. When you merge with a bird, you have unparalleled mobility. Everyone who's ever PvP'd against a Soul Beast has seen them zipping around the map, making screeching noises. This is kind of a zero calorie diet caffeine free version of that. 
that. Additionally, the Alpine Wolf has the ability to make you invulnerable for a short time when you are merged with it, so it does give you an oh crap button. The Wolves in general are all-rounders. They have good damage, good defense, but they don't excel at any one thing. The Fernhound is the only pet in the game that somehow helps you with your ability to heal your team. Its F2 does a heal and applies regeneration on allies around it. This makes it a very unique ally. If you get knocked away or crowd controlled or anything like that, you can hit F2 and your pet will emit a heal that scales with your healing power. So if I was kiting the flak on the Sabbath of fight, for example, where I have to stay a distance away from the team and they get low, I can have the pet, which is right next to the boss, emit a heal, even if I'm out of range to do so easily. The hyena I have never seen used in serious play. The wolf gives the ranger access to fear. It has a 45 second cooldown, it will howl for one and a half seconds, and then fear up to five people around it. This is an excellent option as a second pet in PvP. Because if you get knocked down state, you can swap to the wolf and then activate its ability by hitting F4, F2. You'll swap, it'll howl, and try to get everyone away from you, giving you a chance to possibly get back up. Aside from the leveling process, I have never seen anyone successfully use any of the drakes at high levels of play. The birds, as mentioned before, when you merge with them, you gain access to unparalleled mobility, and you can roam around the map in PvP and get from node to node very quickly. The owl is often taken as the bird of choice because its F3 gives you access to an additional heal. The Raven and the White Raven, its Guild Wars 1 counterpart, can be used to have a blinding option. The Eagle and the Hawk both give a condition damage option. One note here, the Hawk's F2 has only a 6 second cooldown, giving it the shortest cooldown of any pet F2 in the game. How can this be useful? Well, there are many pet talents, such as Wilting Strike, where a beast ability will inflict an extra thing, and it has no cooldown. This means you could do Wilting Strike every 6 seconds if your bird isn't dead. Beastly Warden makes your beast abilities taunt with a 20 second cooldown. As long as you've got an F2 with a 20 second or less cooldown, this would always function. And one of my favorites, Poison Master. When you use a beast ability, your pet's next attack inflicts poison scales with condition damage very strongly. This means every six seconds that your pet's not dead, you can activate Poison Master by having your pet claw the enemy and inflict massive poison along with this bleed. Additionally, when merged with the Hawk, the Primal Cry will also inflict Poison Master on one of its targets. Note, it does hit five targets, Poison Master will only hit one of them. The spiders are ranged, strangely enough, but do very low damage per second and are not often used. You can use the Cave Spider for some gimmick with weakness if you need more ways to get weakness on the enemy. The jungle spider is probably the one used more than any other with the ability to immobilize. Every single spider has an immobilize with entangling web, but the jungle spider also has an immobilize with paralyzing venom, giving it two immobilizing additions to your kit. Later on, when you get the jacaranda, the jacaranda would become your pet of choice for mobilizations because of its much, 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 much higher damage and survivability, along with its immobilization option. The pigs. Each of the four pigs has a forage button, and they all forage different things. Let's go over where I have seen each of these used in combat. The boar can forage skulls, which fears an attacker, and bones, which can be broken over an attacker's head to stun them. Sometimes used in PvP for crowd control, but it is a bit risky having to hit a button, the pet does a channel, conjures up an item, you have to pick up the item, and then you have to use the item. So timing is definitely tricky with use of this in a player versus player environment. The Warthog is a, the condition damage choice for pets. It is the pet of choice for the hybrid soul beast currently, which does heavy condition damage. Its brutal charge will trigger the twice as vicious trait, allowing you to continue doing heavy damage, and its merged F1 maul scales with condition damage as well as its merged F3 primal cry. Additionally, because it has a knockdown on its normal attacks, you could unmerge with it and just have it attack normally to trigger Brutal Charge if you have need of a nether interrupt for an enemy's break bar. The Siamoth, a classic choice. This unique looking little fellow has a very special thing with his forage. Among the items he can possibly forage is Plasma. Now, if you'll watch when I use this item, watch my boons. Oh my god. You get nearly every boon in the game 
for a few moments. The Siamoth itself has a knockdown like any pig, a standard, a decent damaging maul, and it is very tanky and hard to die. Additionally, while merged with it as a soul beast, you gain access to a knockdown stun, a condition damage attack, and unflinching fortitude, which is yet another emergency oh crap but making you unkillable with power damage only. You could still be killed with condition damage for a few seconds. The Psymoth has been a classic option in PvP for a very long time. Everything from the Electric Wyvern on down does require the expansions. The Electric Wyvern is possibly the best pet in the game for interrupting enemies. It has two interrupts, one Lightning Assault, where it charges an enemy. It interrupts them with a launch, and it leaves an Electric Field. This is possibly the only way to make a Lightning Field for the Ranger. Additionally, after it has done that, it will use Wing Buffet, which will repeatedly attempt to knock back the foe with knockbacks. So if you were using a different pet, you were fighting a boss, and it needed to be interrupted. You could pet swap, hit F2, it would Lightning Assault, then do Wing Buffet in that order, doing multiple very effective interrupts. The Fire Wyvern is almost never used successfully. The Fire Wyvern does have a very impressive fire field. It will fly in the air, it is invulnerable during this time, and fly in circles, making a very large fire field, which takes a few seconds to grow, and right there when you see the circle appear, there's the fire field. Here's the problem. While it's flying around, it's not attacking. So yes, it is flying around, but it is it stops its auto attack. It trades its auto attack for the Consuming Flame. And the Consuming Flame is possibly the weakest burn I have ever seen in the game. 544 damage per pulse. Yeah. So it has the rest of the kit, is the same as the Electric Wyvern, but it gives up the additional interrupt for this which effectively, every time you press that button, this thing's damage goes down. The Bristleback. The Bristleback one has one of the highest bursts on its F2 of any pet. When you use its ability, it will anchor and then fire a machine gun for a few moments, doing 10 hits. Additionally, it has a move similar to Sharpening Stone, where when it enters combat, it will instant cast this, making the next five attacks inflict a bleed. So if it has just used this, that machine gun will apply a lot of burst and then a lot of bleeds. It will sit back at almost 1200 range if allowed to do so, sniping the target. It is not the best pet for damage per second, but it has a lot on the front end and decent damage over time after that. Additionally, if you merge it with the animal, you can use its sharpened spines, and you could even stack it with sharpening stone and do some very gimmicky attacks, such as using Warhorn 4 and applying all 15 of these on one person. It's a very fun gimmick, the person either dies or cleanses. That's that's really the two options. <laughs> the smoke scale. The smoke scale does not do good enough consistent damage to be used in PvE, but it is staple in PvP. First off, its F2 makes it spit out a smoke field. You can then use a finisher in it and stealth people. Depending on the finisher, you can even stealth your entire team with it, something not many other people can do. Additionally, it has got one of the only attacks in the pet library that does condition damage and power damage on the A1. It has a knockdown on a mere 20-second cooldown. The knockdown is only one second, but it's plenty enough to be annoying. And Smoke Assault. Also on a 20 second cooldown, or 16 if you're Beast Mastery, Smoke Assault, it will teleport to the enemy and hit them five times in a row. It is also evading during this time. So if the Smoke Scale has been told to attack someone that is up on a higher platform, it will teleport up to them if Smoke Assault is off of cooldown. It's a very good pet for sticking to an enemy, and while it may not do the highest DPS, if your other pets can't keep up with the enemy, they're going to do zero DPS. The smoke scale often ends up doing more damage than other pets in PvP, simply because of its ability to stick to the target. The Jacaranda. For me, this is my favorite tanking pet in the game currently. The Jacaranda has very good toughness and vitality, not as much as a bear, but more than enough. It has a self-healing move it will periodically use every 20 seconds. It has an F2 that will root the target, for near 10 seconds because of its constant pulsing immobilize. It does very low damage on its auto attack, but Paul Lightning, 10 second cooldown, five lightning strikes for over 5,000 damage and stacking vulnerability. This is one of my favorite pets in PvP as well as an excellent pet for tanking in PvE. It is a tanky pet with self-healing and good damage on targets if they're not moving around too much, and it can help them not move around too much. 
It's also an excellent option when attacking an enemy who's downstate that other people are trying to revive, as Call Lightning can hit up to three targets in the area. Additionally, if you merge with it, it gives you two additional self-healing choices to go in addition to your heal that you have here. As a soul beast, since merging and unmerging with your pet revives them, the Jacaranda can be used to tank elite mobs out in the world. Simply merge with the pet if it dies and unmerge. As long as the pet lives at least 10 seconds, you can revive it every time it goes down, and it can tank for you infinitely until that elite mob is dead. The Fanged Eboga. Meet Fight Shrub. I have checked the damage per second with Arc DPS of every single pet attacking a damage golem in the testing room for more than two minutes, both with using their F2s and without. The Fanged Eboga does the most damage the Jacaranda being the second most damage. However, that golem wasn't even fighting back, and the Fanged Aboga applies confusion to the enemy, and that means when they attack, they hurt themselves. Zubat PTSD intensifies. When you are a ranger fighting in PvE, and your pet is next to you, not merged with you, meaning you are core or druid, and you, it's not your job to tank, the Fanged Aboga does the highest DPS of every pet that is left to its own devices, to attack a monster. Hands down, it does the most. The last pet going from top to bottom for the ground pets is the Rock Gazelle. We touched on this earlier. It is often used as the second pick behind the Red Moa for Power Soul Beast at the end game, but it has more interrupts. And lastly, let's talk water pets. The Drakes, the Cats, for some reason, the Devourers and the Bears, as well as Jellyfish and Armored Fish and a Shark are available in the water. Just like players, the pets have different skills in the water. In fact, the Reef Drake can make a ethereal combo field in the water. Did you know that? It's the only way that a ranger can make an ethereal combo field is if they're underwater with a Reef Drake. Not something often useful to know, but there it is. Of all these pets, if you wanted the tankiest one, that could of course be a bear again, but another option is the armor fish. The armor fish is just what it sounds like. It's a, it's a fish with armor. It has a mountain of toughness and vitality, has a stun on its F2, can give itself protection, increasing how long it survives, and can self-heal itself more often than the bear can. When underwater, the shark is probably the highest DPS option. Shocking to hear, I know. You can activate its F2, give it quickness and its next three attacks bleed. Plus, its auto attack bleeds, so that quickness will increase how often these are hitting. It has a charging attack, which inflicts bleeding, and it has a fear. Now, the fear is an auto cast, so you do have to be careful because sometimes this guy will fear enemies when you may not have wanted them to, and sometimes you're like, please use the fear, please use the fear, please use the fear. Additionally, while merged with a shark, you can cast fear, and you get the charge with the huge bleed on the end. Finally, the jellyfish. The blue jellyfish has an AoE chill, the red jellyfish has an immobilize. However, all of them have a normal auto attack, a healing cloud that they auto cast periodically, which releases regeneration, and dark water, which blinds foes. When playing my druid in healing, if I am in the underwater fractal, the jellyfish is my best pal. It is very difficult to keep regeneration on allies underwater because you can't use the staff for the staff 5 regeneration, you can't use Warhorn for Warhorn 5 regeneration, and you can't use Healing Spring for Healing Spring regeneration. But the Jellyfish will just do it automatically, and it scales with your healing power. So as a healer underwater, I really like having the Jellyfish. This is Bikini Bottom, by the way. Say hello. And I think that about covers it. Hopefully this answers any questions or any confusion you might have had about the Ranger pet system in the game. Once again, there are links in the description on where to find every pet in the game. So if you are looking for one in particular, you could just jump straight to it on that very handy webpage and go get it for yourself. Certain ones are only available after certain events, such as getting your first smoke scale may be a little bit of a pain because it only appears after a certain event at Heart of Thorns, but it is, again, all listed on that very, very well-written webpage. I know I'm, I'm not compliment complimenting myself here. I didn't make that website. So I know it sounds like I did, but I didn't. Looking ahead to the future, I constantly get asked, Muck, when the new expansion comes out, do you hope that they add new pets? And I gotta say, with what they did in Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire, they probably will. But that's not even really what I'm hoping for. As I just went over, there are many pets in the game that are never used in 
any game mode in the game. They're just not good enough. Like, no Devourer is ever used, for example. Most of the spiders, completely untouched. Half the dogs and cats and bears are just useless. While I would love to see new animals in the game, the Jacaranda, the Fang de Boga, the Rock Gazelle, the Wyvern, they're all so good that not only are they always used, but the classic ones are used way less often because they're just completely overshadowed. I dream of a patch where they revisit many of the old pets that are never used anymore, like the hyena, and take another look at them, see what they can do there. I think it would be easier on the developers and also just as good for us if they rebalance some of the old ones. They've got the graphic, they've got the moves there, just might need some number tweaking or maybe change one of the utilities or something like that. But that is just a muck dream of the future. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button to help us with the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe if you'd like to see more content. If you'd like to help support the channel, there are many links in the description down below where you can assist us, but otherwise, happy taming!